بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ایم یور ٹیچر نوید انجم نوید فرام آئی ایم سی بی آج ہند وان اسلام آباد وتھ سم لیسن ان گرامر ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس دا کرونا وائرس ان دا لاک ڈاؤن سیو ٹرن آر لائف اپ سائڈ ڈاؤن تھنگس ہیو گون ٹاپ سی ٹروی اینڈ وی آر فائنڈنگ اٹ انکریزنگلی ڈیفیکلٹ ٹو کوپ ود آر سلیبس ان آر اون کیمپس کلاسز In this situation, we must resort to some kind of parallel teaching. I have decided to record short video lessons covering different areas of syllabus and upload them to my YouTube channel. I hope you'll find the stuff useful for you and it will go a long way in helping you prepare for your board exams. Today's class is just an orientation class in which we'll be deciding some parameters and laying out our road map. The lessons will consist of topic-wise short video clips. In each lesson, after the explanation and examples, you'll find an activity followed by the answer key. You'll first watch the video carefully, try to understand the concept, and then attempt the activity. Afterwards, you can match your answers with the answer key in order to ascertain how much you have understood. I strictly advise you not to see the answer key in advance or you'll make the whole exercise meaningless. If you have any confusions or questions, you can discuss your problems with me during on-campus classes. Or if you're not my student, you can consult your relevant teachers. We should also clearly understand the learning goals. The first question is, what do we need to learn? Just like other subjects, there will be definitions followed by examples in each lesson. But you will be required neither to define things nor give examples in your paper. It's the concept that matters. Remember that you will be able to attempt the questions only if you know the concept and its application. You probably already know that all grammar questions are either MCQs or some objective type questions. And learning only definitions doesn't help at all. So you must focus on concept building. Let's also ascertain who is all this for. Obviously, my target audience is my own students at college but anyone from grade 9 to 12 preparing for a board exam through federal board or any other board can use the material and go through the relevant topics. Dear students, remember that online teaching is not a substitute for in-person teaching, nor can it be as effective as learning from a book. The recommended book for you is High School English Grammar and Composition by Ren and Martin. This book has become popular to the extent of being unpopular and you'll find snobbish people declaring it rubbish. Don't pay heed to their opinion and just go for the book. Now let's come to the actual stuff. Of course the first question in a class of grammar should be what grammar is. Grammar is a set of rules that govern a language, especially its structural aspects. By structural aspects, we mean classification of words, how words are inflected, conjugated, and converted into different word types, how they are combined to make larger than one word structures like phrases, clauses, and sentences, what kind of relationships they have in connected speech. All these areas of language study are the structural aspects of language. Grammar is a study of all this. And English grammar begins with parts of speech. Now, what are parts of speech? The words of a language fall into different groups or categories according to their meaning and usage. These groups or categories are called parts of speech. To clearly understand this concept, we are going to have a demonstration. To demonstrate the concept, we will perform a substitution test. Now, what is this substitution test? 
In substitution test, we replace a word in a sentence with another word and see the impact. If the new word fits well into the sentence and the sentence still remains meaningful and intact, we can assume that both the words belong to the same class of words and both the words have got the same grammatical role and function in the sentence. And if the new word doesn't fit well into the sentence and renders the sentence meaningless or creates a grammatical error in the sentence, then in all probability the new word doesn't belong to the same class of words. It must belong to a different group of words. This is how we can easily classify words and divide them into different groups. Now let's see the concept in action. Look at this sentence. The boy sat on the comfortable sofa. It's a very simple, very easy and meaningful sentence. We are going to replace the boy with another set of words. Let's see. The cat sat on the comfortable sofa. Does this second sentence make sense? Yes, it does. It's just as meaningful as the first one. Let's have another example. Ali sat on the comfortable sofa. Is this sentence also meaningful? Yes, it is. Now, what does that mean? It means that the boy, the cat and Ali belong to the same class of words. They are playing the same grammatical role in this sentence because they are all filling the same slot in the sentence and the sentence remains meaningful. Let's have another example. Slept sat on the comfortable sofa. Does this sentence make sense? No, of course not. Let's have another example. Stood sat on the comfortable sofa. Does this sentence make sense? No, not at all. What does it indicate? It indicates that while the boy, the cat and Ali have got something in common, slept and stood are different. They don't belong to the same class of words. They don't belong to the same word group. Let's have some other examples. This time we are going to play the same trick with the second slot of the sentence. This time we'll be replacing sat with other words. Let's have a look. The boy slept on the comfortable sofa. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Look at the next sentence. The boy stood on the comfortable sofa. Is this sentence meaningful? Oh yes, it is. Look at the next example. The boy cat on the comfortable sofa. Does that make sense? No, not at all. What does that mean? It means that sat, slept and stood belong to the same word group. They belong to the same class of words because they are filling the same slot in a sentence and the sentence remains meaningful. Whereas the word cat doesn't fit into that slot. It creates a grammatical error in the sentence. It renders the sentence almost meaningless. So we can conclude that sat, slept and stood have got something similar. They belong to the same class of words, whereas cat is different. Let's have more examples. This time we'll be playing the same game with comfortable. The boy sat on the comfortable sofa. Let's compare this sentence with the next one. The boy sat on the beautiful sofa. Is this sentence meaningful? Yes, it is. Let's have another example. The boy sat on the large sofa. Does this sentence make sense? Oh yes, it does. Look at the next example. The boy sat on the cat sofa. Is this sentence meaningful? No, not at all. Let's take a look at the next example. The boy sat on slept sofa. Is it meaningful? 
No, not at all. Now what does that mean? It means that comfortable, beautiful and large belong to the same class of words. Why? Because they are filling the same slot in a sentence and the sentence remains meaningful. When you compare this group of words with the cat or slept, you find them different. Why? The cat and slept don't fit into the same slot of words as comfortable, beautiful and large. It means they are different. So we can conclude that all the words in a language are not the same. There are similarities and there are differences. And on the basis of these similarities and differences, we can classify those words into different groups or classes. And parts of speech are just these word groups or word classes. Now let's see how the example words can be grouped. We can easily divide these words into three distinct groups according to their meaning and their function in the sentences. The first group is that of boy, cat and Ali. Since boy, cat and Ali are the names of persons and we know that the naming words are nouns so we'll call them nouns. The next group is that of sat, slept and stood and we'll call them verbs because these words indicate the action performed by the subject in these sentences. And the last group is that of adjectives. Comfortable, beautiful and large are called adjectives because they are telling us the quality of a noun. They are qualifying words and the words which indicate the quality of a noun are called adjectives. Apparently it seems to be very simple that all words will be easily divided into different groups and categories. We'll just look at the words and put them into their relevant categories, but it's not that simple. Let's have more examples. Look at this list of words. If I ask you to classify them, many of you will say that book and chair are nouns, whereas chair and open are verbs. Now let's see how they are used in sentences. Look at this sentence. I bought a book. What's book in this sentence? Obviously, it's a noun. Why? Because it's the name of a thing. Now compare the book in this sentence with the same word book in the next sentence. We shall book two seats. What's book now? It has become an action word. And as an action word, we'll call it verb. Look at this sentence. The principal sat on the chair. What's chair in this sentence? It's a noun because it's the name of a thing. Compare it with the next sentence. The principal will chair the meeting. What will the principal do? He'll chair. Chair becomes the name of an action. It's a verb here. Let's look at the next example. I'll not get my share, it's my share, just like my house, my books, my bag. Share is a thing, that's mine. And as a thing, it's a noun. Let's see the next example. I'll share my lunch with you. What will I do? I'll share. The name of an action, a verb. Open the door, please. What's open here? Obviously, it's a verb. Let's compare it with the next sentence. She welcomed me with open arms. What's open in this sentence? It's not a verb. It's not a noun either. It's an adjective because it's telling us a quality of the noun arms and we know that the words that tell us the quality of nouns, they are adjectives. So we have seen that words don't behave in a similar way in the same fashion in different sentences. It's possible for the same word to be a verb in one sentence and a noun in another. It's possible for a word to be a verb in one sentence 
and function as an adjective in another sentence. So when we are dealing with words in sentences, we will have to be careful, even though it is possible to make a rough guess about the class of words just by looking at their meaning. We can make a guess that to which particular class of words this particular word belongs just by considering its meaning. Yet, when words are used in sentences, then the context becomes even more important. Because words keep switching their roles in different sentences. So whenever we are trying to classify a word as a part of speech in a sentence, we will have to be very, very careful. We will have to look on both aspects, the meaning of the word and its usage, its function, its grammatical role in the sentence, how it is behaving in that particular sentence. It is very, very important. Classification of parts of speech has to be done very, very carefully. You will have to keep both these things in your mind. The meaning of the word and its usage, its grammatical role and function, both these things are equally important. And now you can take a second look at the definition of parts of speech with a better understanding. The parts of speech in English language begin with nouns. We will be dealing with nouns in our next lesson, inshallah. Thank you and Allah Hafiz.